Thank you guys for tuning in to The War Room. And I am back in The War Room today with Melissa Smith. She is boxing historian, women's boxing historian, who is the author of A History on Women's Boxing, A History of Women's Boxing. I don't want to screw the uh, title up there, <laughs> Melissa. And she was also a presenter at this year's uh, inductee uh, International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame. And she was a presenter for one of the, the inductee ceremonies. Melissa, welcome, welcome back to the show. I am got a stutter brain today because it's Sunday. It's been a long freaking week, mm -hmm. uh, but I want to welcome you back to the show. Eddie couldn't be with us today. Uh, and so we're going to chat a little bit about how the ceremony went. So, you know, give us your rundown. How are you? I I'm great. You know, I'm in New York City. We have a hurricane going on. So that's been a lot of rain. What? Um, yeah, it, it, we had uh, in Brooklyn, we had over six inches of rain last night. That's crazy. I mean, absolutely crazy. And we uh, need that it, here. Yeah, it, exactly. We it passed over New York, it, 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 sort of really Long Island, and it uh, hit land in right on the border between Connecticut and Rhode Island. What's funny is I have my cousins up here from Florida, and she is just dying, laughing, going, I can't believe it. I'm here and I'm in a hurricane. Really? <laughs> exactly. She left hurricane country to come to Exactly. Here. Hurricane country for here. Anyway, uh, all is well. And I have to tell you, Chris, the, the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame event in Las Vegas. This was our, our eighth event, our fourth in person. Uh, it, it was just a miraculous night. Um, Christy Martin, who you mentioned at the head of the show, was there. She was our first speaker. She um, talked to the audience about having a plan. You know, mm -hmm. if you're a boxer, really have a plan because things can change in an instant. Right. And um, and it, and more importantly, we had a lot of um, industry folks, not only boxers or the boxers we were honoring. But also because it was located in Las Vegas and that's such a big boxing town, we were able to attract um, a lot of folks who just came to support women in the sport. Uh, Kenny Bayless was there. I mean, that was awesome. Nice, yeah. yeah. So there were folks like that who attended. There were, of course, the women we were honoring, their friends and family who really wanted to, to kind of um, see them get this honor. And more importantly, it was an opportunity for the community to really get out and support women who are contesting in boxing, whether it's, you know, an eight-year-old girl who was there who had been on one of Christie's shows and had won a boxing trophy and wow. she was up there with Christy. So you had this amazing continuity between young girls just coming right. up in the amateurs and those who have had these extraordinary professional careers. Absolutely, because people don't understand it's very important to see women in these predominantly men's sports because uh, when there are girls like me who don't want to wear foo-foo dresses and wants to play football and wants to tackle in the street. And, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, we do inspire many, many girls to defend themselves or at least take up the sports to, to defend themselves or some type of thing like that, because... I heard Malik Scott, I don't know if you saw the video that Malik put up on Instagram about women not going outdoors after midnight or after dark because the world is full of psychos. Like that was his answer. And you're a professional fighter who I thought, you know, would think, or you would encourage women to learn how to defend themselves and understand situational awareness and that type of shit. But no, he's telling women, to stay home after dark. Don't walk your foo foo dog. Don't go for a run. Don't wear tidy little skirts if you want to be cute. Go out to a party. I just that mentality is crazy. But when I saw that video, the the untold story with Christy Martin, I it, it just it makes all the sense. I mean, the boxing world is filled uh, with misogyny and uh, abusive personalities coaches, trainers, whatever. And so it kind of made sense to me, right? Like that's his mentality. Well, it's a reflection of the larger world. Just because mm -hmm. women are boxers doesn't mean they're safe. Right. And, right. and you know, to your point, you know, for the audience to understand, Netflix has this wonderful series, a uh, new documentary series called Untold, where they really try to dig deep into stories 
surrounding sports figures and sports topics. And they just did an exclusive documentary about Christy Martin, who is, you know, really the an important figure in boxing, never mind women's boxing, she, but her participation on the undercard of the Mike Tyson fight in 1996. She was put on there because she was um, Don King's first female who he ever promoted as boxer. One of the devils. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the devil, you know, I guess. And the um, the devil, right? they all were devils, uh, as we all know. But anyway, so the, the, the her importance to the sport cannot be underestimated. And as she was a trailblazer coming out in pink, pink gloves, pink pink right. little shorts, pink shirt, Christy Martin robe saying pink. You know, she was under the control of a Svengali-like husband who was her manager, trainer, and, and she was his meal, meal ticket. Right. And this documentary really explores that psychological process and how she became undermined by this abusive relationship to the mm -hmm. point where he tried to murder her. He was and was subsequently in prison for attempted murder. Right, he's still I in murder. prison. He's still in prison. I mean, he knifed her, shot her, and she left survived. her for dead. And she said, hell no, and crawled into, out of her house, bleeding, right. almost dead, into the street. She is a warrior for real. So warrior for real. And does it matter if you have the tools? Because you have to always be aware of your situation, 8 right. to 80. Right. And no, that's true. It's not saying that you won't ever get attacked or be overpowered by somebody, but at least you have the spirit to fight back. Exactly. You know? Have the spirit. And, th and that was, you know, I mean, this Christie's story uh, has so many levels to it because it's also a story of sort of the need she felt to deny her own sexuality. Right, absolutely. Uh, she, you know, later in her life, um, it came out as a lesbian, had always been, but never could accept it within her own self. So there are many, many levels to her story and to her witnessing, if you will, um, the things that happen through this trajectory of experience in a very, very public life. And it may mm -hmm. not be a public life that, you know, ends up on, you know, entertainment tonight in the sense of we may think of public life from the standpoint of movie stars or so on. But in the sports world, she was a very public figure. This is a woman who was on the cover of Sports Illustrated magazine uh, as a female boxer in 1996. So she really has very important um, status in terms of what she tried to do to kind of disrupt the meaning of gender. Right. And she did it in pink because, she and that she, she did it in pink and it was a really focused process which her husband had come up with. It's like, well, well, I think they did that because one, she was masculine and they were trying to feminize her. That's exactly. how I looked at it because I, yeah. you know, I've, I've been a boyish girl my whole life. So yeah. I've had employers tell me, why don't you wear dresses and makeup and skirts and pumps and stuff like that? I'm like, I had to do that in the military. I'm not ever going to do that again. Exactly. So <laughs> no. But uh, so I understood why he did that, because he knew that she would make more money. I know plenty of women who masculine women who feminize themselves because they they have to they want to conform and want to succeed. And it's just easier. I get it. It is. And, and you have to place it into the context of the late 90s and who we were in the late 90s. And right. we may not think there hasn't been a lot of change, but. That's don't ask, don't tell times, right? right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, marriage between two, uh, two people of the same gender wasn't, wasn't even happening. on the radar here. So there, there's a lot of context that had to be there, plus women's boxing, plus trying to appear in the ring and not be threatening mm -hmm. to men. Mm -hmm. Because to your point, as you introduced this segment here, you got Malik. He's a boxer, right? He's this big, heavy dude. And he's on this gender line, right. really clear. 
Right. And these were women that were saying, no, I want to fight for their own motivations. And it didn't have to do about proving their, you know, femininity, right? right? The way men box because they're masculine. It's just the sport. They love the sport. Absolutely. It's like, look, you went in the arm, you know, you went in the armed forces because you wanted to support your country. I mean, you had your reasons. Well, no, really, I went because I wanted to get away from my tyrant mother. <laughs> All right. Well, that too. A lot of, a lot of people there, but you know, I had to get away from home. <laughs> but that, that's, you know, but those motivations right. are different and women uh, are in the contest the sport for different reasons. And, and, you know, at the time, Christy got a lot of criticism because there are women in the sport um, of boxing at that time in particular, who were out as lesbians or out as you know a uh, tomboys you know mm -hmm. like no i have a shaved head or i have right, tattoos right. or or a, a woman like lucia Riker, who is uh, remains this an extraordinary boxer in her time male female doesn't matter she was an amazing boxer and um they tortured her <laughs> they meaning you know christy and, and and her husband because it's sort of like calling into question whether she was even a woman like show me your your chromosome oh, okay so what? wait a minute is it, so uh, i saw that piece in yes in the in the documentary she was saying that about lucia, lucia Riker. Riker? yeah oh my goodness i didn't know yeah. who she who she was talking yeah. about but i was like wow she's really calling no and they like went that. there and they went there because it was also it's competitive and it's yeah and it's hype right right it's right. hot you know look you're in a competitive sport this is right. not this is not this is what it is it's performance yeah. Yeah. you know and and uh someone like muhammad on ali understood that always right. that okay he's a fighter but he's a performer Mm -hmm. and you know all of his poetry and everything else was performance and he learned that from a wrestler named gorgeous george right, right. so so this is performance and performativity within a masculine score i mean it gets really interesting when you think about it right. but under the surface so here's christy doing all of this because she's fighting she's making a living She's got how much husband. do you think her biggest purse was? Do, do we know what that is? It wasn't a million dollars. I'll tell you that. It was not. It was, it was in the six figures, but no woman in America ever made a million dollars. Wow. The only fighter that I know of that ever really made a million dollars was a uh, German fighter, Regina Hellman. Mm. She made a million So Layla Ali never even made a million dollars? No. What? No. Come on now. No. Kick no, her manager to the dollars. No, but she, you know, she did extraordinary things. She produced her own pay-per-view, you know, okay. with, so with Jackie Frazier, she did, you know, Ali Frazier four, mm. you know, okay. uh, on the weekend in Canastona, New York, uh, you know, on the weekend or uh, to coincide with, um, with the uh, um, Boxing Hall of Fame. I mean, there's a lot of things she did. And the thing with Layla Ali is she crossed over into the mainstream in a way that Christy never did. Right. Christy never crossed over. Christy had recognition. She was a woman's boxer. She was known in the boxing community. But Layla could do the talk show route right. in a way that right. no one else. And, and just anecdotally, when I was researching my book, um, and this is 2012, Layla had already retired. And I would ask people just to kind of get their reaction. Have you, do you know anything about Roman's boxing? And they'd look at me like, what? And then they'd say, oh, Layla Ali. They knew Layla. Because Layla is this magnificently beautiful woman. Who As the had most famous boxing father in history. The most famous boxing father in history. And even though she made her own way, right. it didn't hurt, you know? Right. did not hurt and that relationship didn't she learned you know this process from me at his knee if you will in terms of what she needed to do as a brand and she was very smart and very savvy sort of in the in the era before social media as we know it now to create a brand that crossed over and she very quickly capitalized on that so her route was different she she had christy to thank 
because it was Christy that made her understand, oh, hey, right. I can get in the ring. I can be a boxer. Um, but it was her natural gifts, her name, all of these things and, and her awareness of what she needed to do to create her own brand that made her a crossover figure in the sport, uh, which Christy never quite accomplished because of her. But she also had her own demons happening, you know, and we right. learned that through this brutally honest yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, documentary. This, it's like, wow. It's just talking about saying truth. I mean, she gave us a level of truth and honesty that had me really emotional watching it. I know the story, but it's intellectual to see right. her really talk about it and to put it out there. It was um, riveting. It was like, I could not take my eyes away. I was like, oh my God, I want to just choke that Jim Martin, whatever the hell his name yeah, is. Yeah, I want to just... choke him. And just, you know, there he is being, and he was being, her ex-husband was being interviewed in prison. Right. And so self-serving and such a nasty ass motherfucker, if you will. Exactly. To, <laughs> you know, nothing changed. He's nothing, still, he's the, still same, the same dick. <laughs> and he was still then. the same dick. And even when, you know, he was called out on his lies by the interviewer, he would like go, oh, well, yeah, okay, got me. <laughs> and then he moved on to the, the next, next lie. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I was, I was really riveted. And I, as I said, I knew aspects of the story, but to, right. to, for any person who wants to really understand what domestic abuse means. Right. And what it means to be isolated from your, even your family by someone who manipulates their reactions to you, you know, please watch this film. Because, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we're, we're here talking about it because we're interested in martial sports, and, but it's also a human, a very human and very important story about what happens over years of abuse um, and the denial of one's own humanity. Yes, and if you're watching this, there are domestic violence hotlines out there. So, you know, I strongly encourage women to seek help, reach out, talk to somebody. Don't stay silent. You know, we get it, but gotta gotta reach reach out. Yep. So, um, what else is going on? Did you watch that Pacquiao fight last night, or did you not bother like the rest of us? I didn't bother like the rest of us. I, I just saw that I just really didn't have $75 I wanted to give to Fox. Uh, and I, I hear it was a decent card. I, I saw a little bits. What Were there any women on that card? No. No. Hello. So what Hello. else is new? Exactly. So <laughs> they never have women on those kind of cards. So it's like, yeah, it's 2021 and you have some of the greatest women boxing of a generation that are out there. Nah. Like um, who who would you want to see? What two women would you want to see in the fight? In a, in well, a, I mean, right look, you, you've got Amanda Serrano, who is an extraordinary fighter out of Puerto Rico. She's actually going to be on the Josh Paul card next week. Nice. But, and for some dough, uh, which is even better. And frankly, on uh, those kind of, you know, media sensation Instagram fights, that's the first time you got a real female fout on there. And I'm just applauding her, you know. Right so on. I, I want her, I wish her well too. I love I her. Wish I'm her a well. big fan. I, I might even, you know, pay the Showtime money. I, although I've hated all of those kind of clown shows. I'm like, no, well, All you right. know what? I just believe in supporting the women. If I have That's the it. extra money and the women are on the card, I'm going to I'll them. I'll do it. I'll you hear I'll that showtime. You hear that showtime? <laughs> exactly. And you you know, you got to hand it to Showtime because they gave um Clarissa Shields a platform. Absolutely. Um in their yeah. uh boxing after dark, they had her 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 first undisputed, you know? I mean, so but they get it. It's been a, a road, but I you know, sort of just to quickly turn around the corner back to Christy Martin. I mean, one of the things she was talking about is how in the nineties and in the early aughts, these women, women's boxing was on every dang card. It was on all the pay-per-views. It was on Fox. It was on ESPN. All the networks had women's boxing. And then it just died in the 2000s. It just 
only starting to very, very, very slowly make its way Now, why do, why do you think that is? Is it because I think then the UFC was gaining popularity? Um, um, what what well, pulled the women off of the cards? I think, you know, boxing was sort of having a hard time anyway in the middle aughts. And then you had, you know, Christy got off, retired. Uh, oh. Christy stopped boxing. You see a Riker stop boxing, even though was, there was the film Million Dollar Baby. Um, right. But a lot of women just sort of who had boxed in that era really started to stop. Then you had new women coming up, but they didn't really have platforms other than local television. And Layla Ali stopped boxing too. So it just kind of died. And the promoters, again, you know, in a local market, you could see like, uh, like Layla McCarter, who's been boxing for over 20 years. She's a remarkable champion. She's actually fought three minute rounds in Las Vegas on 12 round cards with championships. Um, she would get local coverage because she was in Las Vegas and she'd get local media and you get closed circuit and you could watch her fights. Holly Holm, who fought out of New Mexico, was getting on local markets. Uh, when Lou DiBella in New York, a promoter started to put women on cards in the early 2010s, it was, he would have them televised on local markets like Heather Hardy, Sonia LaMarcus. They were getting on television. Um, and then they were even getting on card slots. It's Shelly Vincent, she's out of Rhode Island. They were mm -hmm. even getting on fight cards on Showtime or HBO. They just never got on the main event. So they were putting the fannies in the seats and selling $20,000 worth of tickets to events, um, but they were never being shown except in local market shows like Broadway boxing. Right. Listen, it Louisville, really is up to the promoters, the bottom it's line. The promoters and the, most of the promoters will. Now you have, you know, a real change in scene now because you've got uh, top rank has, you know, our regular boxing shows kind of went away, right? We don't have Friday night fights anymore. None of those kind of things are happening. You had PBC came in, they made their deals. They were trying to go to all the networks, they even had stuff on live TV. They had one show with a woman that was Heather Hardy. Same day that Clarissa Shields four years ago won her gold medal, her second gold medal, Heather Hardy fought Shelly Vincent. It was on a PB, PBC card. It's the first time they actually televised it, but it really wasn't even televised. It was on cable after the main event. Everything else was shut down. All right, they Carol don't put said, any money into to marketing that no. stuff none so then you know yeah clarissa shields and her promotion team really smart uh match from boxing uh the zones started getting into what two three years ago they picked up some european fighters so you've got more women on cards and you've got a lot more exposure um but no money right. you know uh the zone uh or match from boxing has their fight camp shows through the summer they were supposed to have a three women, two women on a card, two great women on a card. Um, Savannah Marshall, who's um, you know top five, ranked top in the top five as a middleweight, and um, Tasha, Natasha Jonas, who's a, an Olympian medal winner, who fought the fight of the summer last year against Terry Harper, and they didn't have they canceled their appearances because they couldn't get fighters. Now, sort of saying. Oh, because of COVID. Well, you know, it was money. Because I know of at least one fighter who was offered an opportunity and it was just didn't make it worth risking a life to go fight in England. <laughs> so, yes, money is an issue. Money. Money, 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 money. Money, money, and money. Position. And um, and there are a lot of talented people. Listen, we had a championship bout last night. Uh, it was on UFC Fight Pass. It was uh, Lou DiBella, uh, DiBella Entertainment on UFC Fight Pass had five fights. Three were men, two were women. One of them was the main event, Callie Reese, um, Native Amer first Native American uh, women's boxing champion. Mm -hmm. She was defending her WBA uh, junior welterweight or super lightweight. She fought Celia Breckis, right? No, well, she she did fight Celia Breakfast a couple of years ago. Right, I was really really competitive. 
yeah. impressively. But anyway, she has the WA uh, at 140, and she fought Diana Praza, who uh, has come back. She's a former champion, was interestingly trained by Lucia Riker when she first started out of Australia. Extraordinary boxer. She had, she had laid off for five years. She's living out in LA, developing an IT business because you got to have another gig, when, especially when you're a woman, because, hey, ain't going to get a backup paid. plan. That's right. That's right. A backup plan. She won about in Mexico, got this opportunity to fight Callie. Man, she fought her to the mat. That was a great fight, more because Diana Prazak brought it. Callie got the win just uh, it's sort of like she even said, man, my game was bad. I'm glad I won. A win is a win, but man, I got to really work harder if I want to keep this. Exactly. You know, yeah, got to so step it up. Step it up. Um, what do you think about um, uh, her last name is Bumgardner. I'm, I'm, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, she's good. Yeah, she, she's a good fighter. Ooh, she's, she's Alicia. A, yeah, yeah. She's, Alicia, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, she has. She brings the stuff. She's good. You got Raquel Miller, who you haven't seen in a while. At middleweight, welterweight, you know, that's the thing too. Women have to move around weights because it's not like, oh, I I've won my game at lightweight and right. now I'll go up to see, you know, super lightweight. It's like there's nobody to fight. Nobody Nobody's to fight exactly. Pickings. Slim pickings. Slim pickings, not because there aren't women to fight you. It's just that there are no opportunities. So when someone says, "Hey, I got to fight at 160," you go, "Okay, packing on the pounds." It's very hard. Right. And like this is Amanda Serrano story. She's what seven weight classes. Why of, as a champion? Why yeah. in part because she couldn't get the fight. So right. like okay, I'll go to one thirty eight. Okay, I'll go to one twelve or one ten. You know whatever where you want me, you I will go. Right. I will make it work. It. So now she's trying to make a stand at super featherweight at one twenty six, her natural weight. But she's fought everywhere. Wow, yeah, that's so incredible. That, that's the reality for women in the sport. That's right. Well, welcome to the world of women's boxing, folks, because this, <laughs> this is what it's, it's about, right? It's good. All it's right. the opportunities. <laughs> it, it is. We got to keep, we need to keep pressing these uh, promoters to create more opportunities. That's what we need that's out right. there for women's boxing. We do. Okay. Well, Melissa, it has been a pleasure chatting with you as always. I need you to tell everybody where they can find you on Twitter, all your social media platforms, let the people know. You got it. Okay. So I am at Girl Boxing Now on Twitter and on Instagram. You can find me on uh, Facebook, which is just a Girl Boxing page. I also have a blog, girlboxing.org. Admittedly, a little slim pickings lately, but I'm going to be stepping it up with fall, fall season. So I'll be writing much more about the sport. And uh, yeah. my book is A History of Women's Boxing and you can find it on amazon.com. Absolutely. You guys reach out to Amazon to support and order that book today. Okay, people, <laughs> today. And you guys can find me on Instagram at La Fight Goddess and on Twitter at Angry Afro Radio. I am your host, Chris Baldwin. And we'll be back in the war room next week. Maybe Eddie will join us for the next segment in the war room we'll see you guys next time peace welcome to angry afro radio folks thanks for tuning in to the war room I am today we are going to discuss women's boxing and you guys know usually i have eddie in here to discuss boxing and mma and wrestling but today it's what 